Respectfully, man, it's the kid, Million Dollar Key from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm checking in on Industry Most Wanted. Gear. Yeah. What's going on, man? It is your girl, Tampa Mystic, and we are live on the Industry's Most Wanted Industries. podcast. Boom. Big Industry's Most Wanted, wanted not the little one. Respectful. We got Million Dollar Key checking in. What's going on, family? How you doing? Ooh, let them know something. Respectfully, man. I'm glad to be here. I appreciate it. Of course. Absolutely. Sure. Listen, you out here on your grind. Yeah. You're working, doing a lot of different stuff. Go ahead and, you know, kind of give us a brief introduction of what you do, and then we're going to dive in heavy. All right, so uh, my name is Million Dollar Key. For those who don't know, uh, I'm an actor, I'm a writer, I'm a director, a uh, producer. I just dropped a film. Uh, me and Boosie just dropped a film called No Honor, Loyalty, or Love. It's on BoosieMovie.com. You can go check that out whenever you get a chance. That's dope, man. Listen, I love what you got going on. I love your journey. You have multiple roles Wear multiple hats as we should because we have to have multiple hustles out here, right? Yeah. We can't do one thing, definitely. So let's first, before we dive in and talk about everything you got going on right now, take us back. Um, you said that you grew up in Baltimore? Yeah. Uh, so, or you're born there? Yeah, I was born in Baltimore. I kind of bounced back and forth between uh, Baltimore and New York. I lived in Far Rockaway, Queens for like eight, nine years. Okay. Um, so I'm kind of familiar with the, with, with, you know, with, with the, just the whole North End. Yes. Uh, Pennsylvania, Philly, all that type of thing. But pretty much I spent about half of my life in, you know, in both New York, Baltimore, bouncing around back and forth between, you know, those states. Definitely. What brought you out here today? Uh, you know, just... Just chasing something, man. Just just chasing a uh, chasing something bigger than myself. There you go. You know, chasing a chasing a. I don't want to call it a dream because it's more reality now than it ever been. Yeah. But uh, I'm gonna say I'm a ch- I'm chasing a goal in Atlanta. I love that. Yeah. I love what you said, too, that you were chasing something bigger than yourself. I feel like we always have to keep that mentality. Everything is bigger than us. Yeah. When we feel like we're bigger than stuff, we might as well just hang it up. Nah, respectfully. You know, most definitely. Absolutely. Do you feel like if you had stayed back home, maybe up top in one of those states, you would be doing the things you're doing right now? Nah. um, Honestly... Honestly, I'd probably be in a, a bad situation if I stayed up top. Yeah. Uh, especially New York. I feel like New York wasn't uh, wasn't serving me well. Baltimore, same, same. Yeah. You know, I just feel like it was best for me to step out of my environment in order to elevate. I agree. I agree because we really can become a product of our environment. Yeah. Meaning that if you're around bad stuff or rough stuff, we can wind up right in the mix. Yeah. I'm also a believer that in order to put on for our city, we have to leave our city. That's yeah. why I came here. That's why you came here. You know, exactly. you still represent where you from. Yeah. But you out here elevating. Let's talk about your journey before film, before acting, before directing. Did you desire to do something else? Um... I can't say I had an industry dream or an industry goal, but what I desired to do was um, I'm real good at um, renovations. Yeah, okay. So I was renovating houses. Yeah, that's you dope. Know, before, I'm going to say right before the acting. Right before the acting, I was renovating houses, yeah. you know, redoing a living room or redoing a bathroom or, you know, something in that uh, aspect. But I feel like I was going to move to, you know, eventually buying a house, gutting it out, yeah. you know, renting it out and selling it and so on and so forth. Well, you know, doing stuff like that, you have to have a creative mind. Nah, yeah, for sure. I'm also a, a certified electrician, too. When I when I uh, got out of high school, I went straight You want to uh, come look at my AC? Yeah. <laughs> 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 but no, I really feel like in order to do what you do, you have yeah. to have that creative mind, which rolls in and ties into you doing video and movie film directing. Nah, for sure. You have to have a creative mind for that. So you've been acting professionally for about seven years? Yeah. 
Let's talk about that a little bit. Like, what was the starting point? And I want to ask that because there are people out here who maybe aspire to act, yeah. but they don't know where to start. How did it happen for you? So, first and foremost, if you trying to start something, just start it. If you never start, you're never going to finish. Mm. If you never start, you're never going to get, you know, a whiff of what things could be. So, um, also, how it started for me may not be how it started for you. So, how it started for me was um, I was writing. Uh, I think I was writing music for a long time, like okay. writing music, but not really putting the music out, so to say, but, you know, writing music. But in the music, I'm telling stories. So, in those stories, I'm, I, you know, I figured out to myself, like, maybe if I take the beat away and, <laughs> you know, and just leave the story as is instead of trying to make it a melody. Yeah. I could actually write a movie there or you a go. book. That's kind of where my mom was. And then in this time, it was a guy. Uh, it was a guy named Keith in Baltimore. He he might be like a year younger than me or something like that. But he had he had had like two movies out already mm. on YouTube, and it was it was like nothing short of amazing to me because it was like, you know, where we come from, um, being in a movie is is a it's a big thing. Yeah, you know. Uh, of course, once you get in, you see the the levels to everything. But <laughs> you know, uh, just just starting, man. That's that's really kind of how it started. He allowed me to uh, star in his his film, and then once I seen myself on camera, you know, I kind of said like, "Oh, okay, I'm I'm alright." I know that's if right. I, if I put a little <laughs> energy in this, this this mic could go somewhere, you know. So uh, I finished that movie. He put me on to, that same guy, put me on to a, a series in Philadelphia called Trap Season 2. Okay. Uh, shout out to Chop Mosley and Francisco Joseph. Those were the, uh, the writers on there. Um, Chop was the DP, of course. Um, I did that series, and that was it. That, that kind of... Uh, that solidified know, it. Yeah, that, that that locked it in for me. So after I did that, or in the midst of me doing that, I get another movie. Mm. So I'm kind of doing that series and another movie at the same time. Look and at God. This respectfully, this movie gotta give gotta give him the glory. Yeah, respectfully. So this movie was called the Tillman Project or something like that. The Tillman. Anyway, I'm shooting these two movies at the same time. And uh, I see Boosie doing that My Struggle. Yeah. So I'm just saying to myself, just almost like I already knew him. Yeah. I said, like, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go get in this movie. Just like I'm going to go get in it. Like, I already know him. I already know how I'm going to get there. But the whole time, I don't know none of that. Um, I'm deadbeat broke at the time. I'm kind of living uh, check to check. Yeah. I'm bouncing Bouncing back and forth between Philly and Baltimore, trying to get these uh, scenes shot. And um, in the midst of that, he's casting. I'm DMing people crazy every day. I'm hitting people every day, every day. <laughs> this dude answered me named Show Out. Okay. <clears throat> when Show Out answered me, he uh, he tell me, like, if you could be on set by 12 o'clock, you know, I'll let you be an extra. So I'm like, bet. <laughs> but... It's like, like I said, I'm dead beat broke. I'm laying in my bed. It's eight in the morning when he's telling me this. And you're up top? I'm in Baltimore. Baltimore. And, and this, he, is this is in Atlanta. <laughs> and like I said, it's eight o'clock. Obviously, the drive wouldn't be fast enough. Right. So I got to fly. Me and my mom's kind of, you know, contemplated back and forth. I told her, like, you know, it's something different this time. I feel something different. Yes. Like, I, I got to go and, you know, she ain't have it really. I ain't have it at all. She ain't have it really. My mom spent like her last buck thirty six, buck thirty five on on, on a uh, on a one way flight. Shout out to her, man. Respectfully, the, the, the That's queen. A mother's today, love. Today her birthday. What's her name? Uh, I don't want to say her name. Okay. <laughs> Happy birthday! By the time you see this, it'll yeah. be a few days past your birthday. But shout out to you, beautiful queen. You know that was amazing what you did for him because it was life changing. But that's a mother's Watch love it. right there. Yeah. Mothers do that. That's so my best friend, man. Of course. The truth. That's your first love. Respectfully. Absolutely. So definitely. Happy birthday and shout out to her. Yeah. So she helped you out getting down here. Yep, I got down here. Um, 
Now, and thank I, you for being transparent and sharing that too. I love hearing that because some people skip past that part. Oh yeah. So so for the people that skip past that part, they're gonna find out about it eventually. <laughs> it's best to just be a hundred percent honest. I, I, I'm gonna be real with you. Honesty goes further than trying to fabricate and act like you're something that you're not. Man. Remember that. A lot of people go broke trying to look like they got yeah, money. Yeah, <laughs> respectfully. So I take the flight. Uh, I get here. I don't got no money for food. I don't got no money for transportation and rides. I'm literally on a dollar and a dream. Um, or a dollar and God, however you want to put it. Um, <laughs> so I go. I get the set. Set is actually not too far from the... From the airport. Okay. I get to set. It's at like a jail or something like that. Um, I think he was locked up in a place named Angola or something. So jail in Baton Rouge. Okay. Um, I get there. When I first get out the uh, the car, I don't even remember how I got this ride. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> but I, got, I did get a ride there. I don't remember how, but I got a ride there. Um, I get there. I go see the AD. The AD name was Quisha. I go see the AD. I talk to her, get my clothes ready, see where I got to go. I probably got the set clothes that yeah. I brought from uh, Baltimore and maybe a pair of jeans, maybe, and a shirt. And I got my laptop. I don't even know why I brought my laptop. <laughs> you never know. You never know. That's what you know. <laughs> but, um... I get there, I talk to her, I see where I got to go and, you know, post up for, for uh, production. I walk back through to go outside for a second, but I see him. I see Boosie, like, he's sitting down eating Popeyes. So I walk past him. I ain't want to, like, you know, of course. dive on him immediately. And then my, um, my mom had texted me right in that, that instant, like, yo, he, see, my mom, she like an old school Al Green, you know, uh, OJ's type of you know listener, yes. so she don't really know, you know this uh, side of understood. Things, you know, so she just asking, is he there? Like I don't know who he is, but whoever <laughs> you went to see, is he there? Because we spent our last right? right, right, right. So I'm like, yeah, he there. She like say something if you don't, you know, he might not be there tomorrow. Closed mouth don't get fed. So I end up going to introduce myself to him. Um, he had asked me if I came all the way down there just to work, and I introduced myself. That was kind of that. I think I got a picture with him later that day, and I showed him a scene from. I showed him a scene from Trap Season Two, mm. the movie that the first dude introduced. You know, the series that the first dude yep. introduced me to. So it kind of all, you know, tied together. So I I show him the scene. And then he liked the scene so much, he told me to take his number. Mm, he gave me two that. different numbers. So I took his number. And then uh, the night in, everybody dispersed. Remember. <laughs> like, what do I do now? I don't have no money. So, but <laughs> on my way up here, I seen, I seen a Super 8. So I walked down the street to the Super 8. And I go post up at the Super 8. And I kind of like go to the back of it. Yeah. And it was summertime, too. It's August. Mm. Probably like right after my birthday. Blazing like hot. That. Yeah, so I'm good. I ain't even tripping. I'm really from the snow. Right. So I ain't really tripping about the, you know, about being outside. I don't care. I'm again, I'm chasing something bigger than myself. So I'm willing to sacrifice and take the risk needed. Yes. You understand? I love it. Um I go back there, I kick back. I don't know if I dozed off or not. I don't know. It was like a cat out there with me. <laughs> Keeping you company. Look, I don't even like cats, but he would not leave me alone. <laughs> but you know what? Um, Real quick intervene. Cats can sense good people. That's one thing I know. They can really uh, sense good people. So they that cat seen something in you. I never heard that before. Yeah. Um, the day break, I'm talking about soon as the sky cracked, I got up and started going back to set. So I get there. Um, I'm kind of like the first person in for real. I wait for everybody to get in. We kind of repeat the same thing again. Yeah. Only thing is, and I caught them on the first day of set, too. That was that was another thing that was ironic. We kind of repeat the, everybody repeat the same thing again. They shooting another scene, yada, yada, yada. Uh, he needs somebody to do a scene now. Like a, like a, he adding somebody on the improv. Yeah. I think I'm in the cell with, See murder. Okay. 
like the person who's playing Play C, C murder, murder, yeah. But the person who's playing C murder is quick. Mm, shout out to quick, man. Shout out to quick. We love you, Respectfully. bro. Respectfully. Yes. Love, family. Um, I like, I got like some headphones on. I say Boosie beat the charge. The jail go crazy, whatever, right? Uh, he was asking me, like, you going to do it the right way? You know, you going to. I'm like, yeah, I got you. I got you. So, boom, I did it. It went well. Um, later that night, before later that night, I'm sorry, he, he was talking about a party. But the party he was talking about was Boosie Bash, but I didn't know. Right. Even, you know, I was oblivious to it. Yeah. So I'm just asking him, can I go to the party? Because I'm thinking it's at his house. Because I just need, I just want to go to sleep. <laughs> I just want to lay down. <laughs> you know? Because I wasn't really wanting to party. I was just going, you know, kick back. Um, he kind of looked at me up and down and almost like, nigga, you know what party you talking about? <laughs> but he looked me up and down and um, kind of walked past me. He kind of nodded his head. Now that I know him, that was a yes. Mm. But he nodded his head and walked past me. And I'm in that moment, I'm like, <laughs> are we good? <laughs> I could come I, jump, jump in with you. Nah. <laughs> um, so the night in, um, everybody leave again, disperse. This time he called me. Yo, go away by my truck. So in my mind, I'm kind of wondering, like, okay, the party tonight, you know, I'm make sure I get some rest. I don't know what tomorrow going to look like, but yeah. today I'm getting some rest in the house somewhere. So we we, <laughs> we go to the house. We we drive to his house, like, 40 minutes or something like that. We drive to his house. Um, everybody get out the car. I get out. I go in. We sit in the, live, we sit in the kitchen and talk. It's probably, like, 2 in the morning we get there. We sit in the kitchen. We talk to like five in the morning, mm. and then um, once five rolled around, he kind of like, "All right, I'm busting out," and just went upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm downstairs. Everybody kind of went their way. So I'm like, you know. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> do I fall asleep? Do I not? <laughs> do I leave? You know what I'm Walk up the street. <laughs> so I end up I lay down on the couch. And it was murder she wrote for the next like 15, 16 days. I I was with him going back and forth to set. And uh, you know, just treated me like one of his. Yeah, I love that. That's the one thing about Boosie. There's a lot of good things about Boosie, but that's the one thing is he yeah. really takes the time with people, yeah. whether it be artists, actors, etc. Like, you know, I always hear those type yeah. of good stories about him. He has a good heart. You, sh you, I believe you have to shoot your shot in life. Respectfully. You know, because uh, we miss 100% of the shots we don't take. Respectfully. You took that chance you flew down here not knowing what to expect know what was gonna happen what was gonna happen like you said you were on your last dime basically and it worked out for you look at god that's yeah. all god right there it's crazy though because um even even shooting a movie with him kind of sort of went sort of similar yeah. like i guess he'd been watching me you know just watching me this whole time and seeing my progress and seeing that like i'm relentless by any means necessary <laughs> i'm relentless i will not stop you know i'm not gonna stop going with it yeah so i guess he's seen that and um you know once i once i seen him do a movie and um executive produce somebody else film yeah i figured hey i've been around you know let's work together you've been, you've been seeing me work man so i wrote a script and i showed him I emailed it to him. I gave it to him. Here, here you go. Here you go the script. Right here. Just read it whenever you're drunk. He's never gonna read it. You gotta he's a he's a he's a visual person. Yeah. You gotta see it. Right. So what I did was and it took me some time to learn that. Yeah. You know, you gotta learn people. Um what I did was I went back to Baltimore. Cause I used to I used to come up here and I used to just stay with him. While I'm doing whatever I'm doing on the acting yeah. tip. So um, I went back to Baltimore. I 
free game, respectfully, for all my film writers and film directors. I went back to Baltimore. I picked out my power scenes in my film. I shot my power scenes. I put them in the trailer. I put some nice sound behind it. Made sure I had some great actors, some decent quality. I shot it for 250. I brought that trailer to him and let him look at the trailer so he could see visually yes, what's man. going on in my mind. I love it. So once he's seen it, he probably watched about, it was two minutes long, like two minutes and 10 seconds. He probably watched 40 seconds of it. He said, hard. And then he kind of like left it alone. Yeah. Probably two days later, kind of talked more on it. And, you know, he said, let's do it. And <sighs> it was up from there. And then he, uh, like I said, he executive produced it. So he funded the whole situation for me. Man. Yeah. And, I, and I paid him back within the first three months I was dropping it. See, everything you just said should inspire some people. Because they're, like you said earlier on, if there's something you want to do, you just have to do it. Got to. There's never going to be a right time to do anything. You just have to take that leap of faith. Now, I'm not saying doing anything crazy, but... Life is about taking risk. Yeah. And that's what you did. And it landed you in some good situations. You connected with the right people. And I love the fact that you said that you presented something to him in a way that how he would want it. Like you said, he's yeah. a visual person. Yeah. I'm the same way. I don't like to sit down and read. I'm a visual person. Yeah. So if someone brought me something to read, I'm like, okay, I might get to it next week. But yeah. if it's visual, like you did the trailer, boom. Watch it right now. Yeah. So that's some great advice, some great gems that you just dropped on the people. Yeah. So this film that the, you showed the trailer, you guys filmed, what was it like working with him on this one? Uh, I feel like it was a beautiful thing. It, it, created, a, um, it created a partnership. Uh, uh, I got to see how he worked in film and how much he actually loved film, like just like me. Yeah. Um, another thing, that's, we're going we're gonna to jump back yeah. to that topic. So as far as... Um, create uh, creating a product for what you're going for. So for people who are creating a Tubi product, dive in for what Tubi is looking for. If you're doing Netflix, dive in for what Netflix is looking for. That's that's more nine times out of ten how you'll get to connect and work with these people. So if Netflix is looking for six K, hypothetically, if they're looking for six K and uh, uh, a certain uh, quality on the um, editing tip and a certain lens. Make sure you get those things and follow through with those aspects so this way you could, you know, tend to those people's needs. That's how you get locked in with them. Yes. Free game. Absolutely. And it's it's similar to artists wanting to get sync licensing, getting their music in film. Yeah. You need to create music that's going to fit the type of film that you're going for. Right. You know what I'm saying? Don't send them a, a club record, but it's a, a love movie. Or, you know what right. I'm saying? Romance or whatever. Right. You had, Same thing with, like you said, you have to cater to what they're looking for. Yeah, I think a lot of people lack to realize that. Definitely. So with the film, he presented you with a budget. Yes. And you said within three months of it filming, you were able to pay him back? Yep, 50000 He <sighs> gave me 50000 I paid him back 50000 that's yep. a good relationship right there. He's yeah, probably like, definitely. whoa, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. But um, it's, go ahead, what you was going to No, say? I was going to say, so from there, are you guys now working on other stuff together? So um, I'm currently writing number two. I kind of I kind of branched off and, you know, I'm doing a couple of other things right now. I'm getting ready to shoot a series. Uh, I just got a manager. Uh, publicists and, and things like that, things of that nature. So I'm putting together a series with with a, with a good team. Look at you and moving on up, yeah, moving on up. Respectfully, <laughs> <laughs> that is dope, bro. I'm listen. I'm proud of you because that you really started from the bottom and yeah. worked your way up, not looking for handouts, yep. not knowing where the next sleep is going to come in where the next meal might come in coming down here that first time but look yeah. where it landed you now you're like in a good position you know and you're still rising up yeah that's why that's why i feel like i feel like no risk no reward i yeah. feel like take the risk or lose the chance i feel like ease is a greater threat to success than hardship yes because 
you know, great things don't come easy. No, that's, that's just what it is. Anything good does not come easy. Yeah, you know. If it comes super easy, I probably don't want it. Yeah, respectfully. <laughs> <laughs> just like, ladies, don't be easy. The men yeah, ain't going to want man. you. I'm just saying. Give a little fight, baby. <laughs> Definitely. So you've been in Atlanta for how long living? Uh, I've been living in Atlanta for like a year and a half, two years. Do you feel like having the opportunity to work with Boosie was one of your biggest inspirations for wanting to move here? Uh, I think my biggest inspiration for wanting to move to Atlanta was working with Tyler Perry. Man, have you yeah, been I'm, to his compound yet? Yeah, yeah, I've been to his studio a couple of times. Man. I never shook his hand. I never, like, got to have a conversation. It'll happen. Yeah, 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 for sure. All in due time. Definitely. You know, you know in life, we, 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 we all on the, uh, words from the wise, we all, we all on a, uh, a GPS timer. Mm. Even things you want. Places you're trying to get to. Yeah. The date this video is going to come out. It's all on the GPS timing. You know, so sometimes we, we want things to happen before it's supposed to happen. And we rushing it. We pushing it. We stressing ourselves out. You know, <laughs> driving ourselves crazy when, you know, it's coming. It was coming anyway. You just was going too hard and thinking too hard about it. Man. And about something that was going to happen anyway. You are absolutely right. And that's how we sabotage ourselves because we overthink yeah. situations. I'm an overthinker. And I'm learning to not do that because, like you said, you just got to let the cards fall as they yeah. may. Let it play out how it's supposed to. Because there are certain situations we have absolutely no control over. We cannot control when you might meet Tyler Perry and work with him. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you can work on things to get you to that point. Respectfully. You know, so you are absolutely right, man. You're dropping some gems a day. Yeah, they got to hear it. They got to hear it. <laughs> so you have uh, opportunities now for people who are aspiring actors to get in film? Yes. Yes, I'm about to start casting soon i'm not gonna drop no information today yeah but i definitely will be casting soon um also uh like for people who want their music in films mm. i take people music uh as long as we can make a agreement that makes sense i take people music in my films uh, everything up and coming because i remember getting on a one-way flight yeah. So everything up and coming always. I love the fact that you are giving up and coming aspiring actors and artists that opportunity. I love that. That's why I do what I do. Like, yeah, I sit down with some famous people from time to time, but I like working with people on the rise because I want to give them a platform. Same thing that you're doing, man. Yeah, for sure. That is super dope. So how soon... For people who are watching this, because ironically, I get asked quite a bit from artists, you know, because they want to get into acting. Do mm -hmm. I know anybody? And I got a couple of people I direct them to. So I'm going to start sending some your way. Yeah, for sure. How soon are you going to be casting? I would say September, okay. October. Right around the corner. Um, actually, October 31st. Yeah, October 31st. We're doing a... Um, so with that movie I dropped with Boosie, yeah. we actually went on tour with that film and we, we did... Um, we did movie premieres in Atlanta at the Regal Theater in Atlantic Station. We did it in um, Jackson, Mississippi. We did it in North Carolina, Charlotte. We did it. In, uh, I did it in Baltimore. I did it in um, a few different cities. But I'm doing South Carolina next on the 31st mm. of October. And uh, I think Atlanta was like the biggest. I think I, we sold like three theaters out. Wow. It was like 260 seats. Of, Feels uh, good, don't it? It was crazy. I'm talking about. Now I got to bring my grandmother. My grandmother got to see it. Oh. You know, she said she never seen nothing like that before. That's amazing. Something out of a magazine. Does she live here? Yeah, she live here now. Actually. Okay. Yep. That is Man. dope. They moved here, uh, you know, just believing in the. Yeah. Your mom's here as well? Yep. Wow, shout out to the ladies, man. Yeah, we're OG. I, I love that. When we're you OG. do another movie premiere here in Atlanta, I'm shooting my shot right uh, now. Uh, yeah, respect. you gotta shoot. I would love to come out and do some media. Ah, uh, yeah, I wish I could get you in uh, South Carolina. Let me know in advance. I know that one is you said in October, but like if yeah. you do out here in Atlanta, you know, I've got the mics, I I've got, got the cameras, I've done some red carpet movie premieres for you. other, you know movie directors and filmmakers like yourself so i would love to do that i got you come out there sure. and interview everybody yeah. and that would be hard you. that would be hard so outside of music let's switch mm -hmm. gears for just a minute mm -hmm. i know you you do a lot of stuff within film as far as acting and directing 
What else are you aspiring to do outside of the film industry, if anything? Uh, outside of the film industry, I'm just looking to... Um, it's crazy because I was supposed to wear it today, but, you know, I ain't have none. The clothing brand. I, yeah, I got a clothing brand. Uh, it's called Vin Allen, um, Vin Allen Vintage, uh, a brand that fits. So uh, it's inspired by my pops. My pops... Um, my pops created. He's a very creative person as yeah. well. And he... Uh, my pops actually gave me the original name to that movie that I dropped with Boosie. Shout out to your pops. It was, it was No Honor Among Thieves. That was the original name. Mm. But, you know, politics, we had to change it. Yeah. Things like that. But, um, yeah, that clothing brand is definitely um, based from my pops' mental and uh, the things he wanted to do with it. Yeah. So I'm just... Bringing you know, it to life. I'm turning it up. Yeah. I love that. Does he reside here as well? Nah, not yet. He's still on. Uh, he's still in like a halfway house. Okay. They just came home. Yeah. Well, that's good though that you're able to take his vision and bring it to life. Yeah, and I'm proud of him for wanting to um, wanting to push forward with something absolutely. bigger than himself. Man, absolutely, because we're all human. Yeah. A lot of us get caught up in situations for sure. you know what i'm saying and that's can't be the end all yeah ain't you know, nobody perfect nobody listen we yeah. all 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 make mistakes period yeah. we just gotta it's how we learn from them and apply what we learn from them going forward to make sure we don't do it again yeah. but shout out to your pops man you know that you're helping bring his vision to life has he had the opportunity to see your films yet Anything that you've starred in or, or worked on? Yeah, he's seen that movie. He's seen the, uh, the one I just dropped with Boosie. And uh, to chime in on what you just said, uh, God is going to give you the... You hear me? It's for you. God is going to give you the same test back to back to back to back until you pass it. When you pass it, you'll realize different things are happening in your life. Mm. Respectfully. That is so true and yeah. oftentimes when things feel like they're getting really hard in our life i feel like it's god setting us up for something bigger yeah. he's always going to close one door to open something bigger yeah. and we can't question it it may seem weird or like a struggle at the time but it's beautiful so remember this the questions is complicated but the answers is simple mm. you got a lot of wisdom <laughs> <laughs> you hang around oh geez <laughs> Uh, uh, I grew up. I grew up around a lot of giants. Uh, my pop, my uh, my pops always uh, talked to me. Yeah. Like, even when I was a little, like before I could like truly understand what he was talking about. Yeah. I still remember days like my pops uh, sit and just ramble to me. Yeah. It might have been some some thorough, you know what I'm saying? Might yeah. Have been some thorough situation that he was telling me about, but you know, just over time, I think I think uh, seeing so much in life. At a young age or um, just maybe things I grew up around, I think over time it kind of, it kind of made my heart go, you know, it kind of sharpened your brain. Yes. For, for, uh, it sharpened your brain on a different perspective, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. And we have to be open to that. Because yeah. if we are not open to change or adversity or anything, I don't think we'll ever level up or advance. Yeah, I think that's one of my biggest. Um, I think that's one of my biggest. Um, like qualities. Yeah, I would say like it got to be one of my biggest qualities that I'm so adaptive to change. <laughs> you look like a million. <laughs> yeah, I was like I'm so adaptive to change. Is like, like. Like, regardless if I like it or not at first, yeah. I'm still able to bend and, and, and work with it and still make that shit work. Because uh, once you get into the swing of it, you may fall in love with it. Yeah. You know, like, I get that because there's times where people will present something to me. I'm like, nah. But then if you go forward with it, you might, man, this isn't yeah. at all what I thought. I love it. Yeah. You know, so we have to take those chances, yeah, those risks. For sure. Definitely. Um, are you going to be working on any type of, I know you do the films. Are you going to be working? Do you do like music videos? Is that something that ever interests you in working uh, on? I'm about to uh, I'm about to grab a camera now. Like I was uh, telling you earlier, I'm about, to, I'm about to jump on a camera. So I never shot a music video, right. but I've directed music videos. There you go. Okay. You know, I've told people like, no, it look better like this if you 
do this, if you turn this lighting up, if you, you know. So I've directed music videos, but no, I never physically shot one. Do you want to get into learning how to, to film? I know you said you're going to pick a camera up, so it sounds like you want to learn how to start filming. Yeah, for sure. I also plan to start a podcast. Man, that is hard. I'm excited about that. For sure. You don't have to give us all the tea, but... Can you give us any gist of what the podcast is going to be about? I don't got nothing. I'm going to just start. Okay. There you go. <laughs> I'm just That's start. what I did. I Listen, yeah. I didn't know nothing about nothing. And yeah. I just shout out to DJ Clue, man, and DJ Culture. Shout out to DJ Clue. They were the first ones that gave me a shot at radio. You know what I'm saying? See, people like that. No, for, you said DJ Clue and who else? And uh, his business partner, DJ Culture. So DJ Culture and DJ Clue, respectfully, shout out to y'all. We need more people like y'all. I just did a, um, I just did an interview with uh, a young man named Jay Hill. Yeah. And uh, the post actually went viral. Oh. I was talking about gatekeeping. Like, you know, um, I said gatekeeping is, is withholding information that'll help somebody that won't cost you a fucking thing. Right. Um, I feel like in this industry that we in, we got a lot of people that, that just don't want you to be bigger than them. They don't want you to be what you're set out to be or what you, I mean, not that they can stop it. Right. You know, this shit is going to happen anyway. Respectfully. <laughs> Period. But, respectfully. Um, you know, I just feel like there's, there are people like just a given fact Yes. There are people out there that can make it easier for you. Yes. That can help you out with something. Now, not that, you know, you're looking for a handout or you're looking for somebody to give you something. That's right. But let's be real. We all need somebody. Everybody needs somebody. I don't care what you're doing or what you think you're selling by yourself. You're not. You need all of the customers that are buying it from you. You need to manuf uh, manufacture a company that you're getting the product from. Right. You need somebody. Facts. So when people say, oh, uh, they're not gatekeeping, you're just looking for a handout. No, no, you're not looking for a handout. You're looking for the people that you actually need to elevate, just like you do when you're selling your clothes. Or just like that guy does when he's building his uh, film camera or film equipment. Everybody needs somebody. That's just how it is. I Listen, I agree. And I'm the type of person that I'll ask a yeah. million questions. A closed mouth don't get fed. Yeah, and a dummy is the person that didn't ask the question. No. Nah, respectfully. Facts. Respectfully. And you are absolutely right. Yeah. Like, if I need to know something, I see someone else doing it, I'm going to ask them. Not that I'm trying to copy what they're doing, but I want to figure it out. Point me in the right direction. Pride is a deadly sin. Listen, <laughs> we... it's. My my business partner, my OG, told me that a long time ago. He's like, it's okay to ask for help. Yeah, you man. know what I'm saying? It is okay. And, and the worst that could happen, someone says no. The gatekeepers, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Because there's a lot of that going on out there. But I'm that person. I, I love spreading wealth and knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, respectfully. Definitely. What's coming up next for you? Uh, like I said, I'm getting ready to uh, dive in with this this uh, this series, with, uh, with this team that I'm working with now. I'm writing... No Country for Old Crooks, which will be the sequel to what I just dropped with Boosie. Yeah. So I'm writing a sequel to that now. My name is something different, so I don't feel average like No Honor Amongst Thieves 2. You know what I'm saying? Or um, No Honor, Loyalty, Love 2. I don't want to. I don't even want it to feel like that. Yeah. And then uh, one of my favorite directors ever is John Singleton. Yes. And, um... You know, I watch a lot of his work. I watch a lot of the ways that he shoot things, his angles. His, yes. You know, I, I, I watch a lot of that in detail. And I got to soak the game on a lot of different sets, BMF and uh, Tyler Perry, the Medea Homecoming, uh, just, just plenty of sets. I got to soak the game from. So um, I feel like number two of that movie is going to be it's going to be some. And I want I want to put. I want to put some people together that that just that's just unnatural. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like I don't I don't have it right now. Obviously, you know. I think Denzel's like twenty a movie. Yeah. And we ain't talking. <laughs> we ain't talking twenty thousand. I think he like twenty million a movie. Right. So like, but I want to get a Denzel Washington, uh, a Michael B. Jordan. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite actors. Yes. Both of them. Both of them actually, um, and then uh, 
a Gucci man. Okay. Can think about yeah. can you imagine Gucci man and 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 <laughs> Denzel Denzel Washington in a scene? <laughs> that would be crazy. That would be crazy. That's really capturing two different types of audiences. I love it. From two total different separate mindsets. Exactly. You know who who I feel like is kind of doing that and and like he really taking a bet 50 cent. I, I wanted him. to work with 50 Cent since I started doing film. I love film. him, man. I like, love that dude. This dude is so calculated with his business ventures, yes. man. Like, I feel like, I really feel like he slick don't get enough credit I for I agree. It. Like, just to, just even with power, I was watching, I was watching an interview on him when he was telling, uh, don't quote me exactly, but he was telling a story about how he wasn't really making Nothing crazy over power. It was it was just something from his heart that yeah. he wanted to do. Yeah. And it's you know what's crazy about that? Power is one of my the first, the beginning. Ghost was alive and all of that type of thing. That was one of my favorite things to do when I came home from work. Is watch power. A lot of people felt that way. Power was pressure. And then you had Empire. Yeah. Um shout out to uh shout out shout out to the whole cast on Empire. Yeah. For sure. That that was a great show as well. Um, you know, you had your Lucius Lion, your Cookie Lion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was that was dope as well. And going back to what you said earlier too about like um, some of these film directors with the particular angles that they're capturing, like cinematic type stuff, yeah, can make a difference in the film. Like me as a consumer who watches film, I watch for stuff like that, where the camera could have been better, like here where it caught like just a little bit of the table and then the you know what i'm saying like the way they position the all that stuff matters Man, it's so crazy that you're saying that because that's what i was describing in my interview when i said i was being gatekept while i was shooting my film <laughs> because it was people that know that was people around that knew like okay if he would just if he catch this shot like this it'll be so much more better but you know i'm i'm this is my first time shooting a movie my right. first time shooting a movie God bless me to get a fifty thousand dollar budget. My first time to be able. So it's like I'm doing my absolute best, but at the same time, you know, you could really help me do better. But you hold it in. You don't want me to do that. And then like, because you're right, a lot of people don't want to see us do better than them. Yeah, and which I is feel crazy. Like, I feel like, I feel like God do put those special people. Uh, you know, in the industry, I, I feel like those good people are still sprinkled in. Like, I had a conversation with Terrence Howard. Mm. Uh, this is via FaceTime. Yeah, I had a conversation with Terrence Howard, and uh, he said to me that will never leave. Uh, ne that will never leave my mind. We all just need a little bit of help sometimes. Man, that is facts. When Terrence Howard said that to me, it kind of just stuck to my brain. Yeah, you know, and that's that's another reason that. I push paying it forward. Yeah. Because he could have said, well, I don't got no time. I don't want to talk to him. I just got upset. <laughs> he don't know me from hole in the wall. Right. But him taking the time to have a conversation with me and saying that after I could see in his face, he's dead beat tired, but he still took the time, a stand up man to have a conversation with somebody that's up and coming. Nothing but respect, brother. That is Forever. facts. That is absolute facts, man. Yeah. You are right. Do you have anybody now that's been doing this for a long time that you have, like, you mentor with? Uh, just God. Yeah. He's just always God. the best one. Yeah, he, uh, he kind of pushed me, pushed me where he want me to go. It was up to me to look and pay attention and yeah. be on point and not be, you know, getting distracted by, um, the small things that probably won't matter in five years. That is facts. We oftentimes worry about stuff that never come to fruition. Yeah. If we know it's not going to matter in five years, stop worrying about it. If it's not going to matter in five minutes from now, stop worrying about it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely. That's why, like, just gonna no, say, no, you go ahead. Okay. Um, like, I'm 27. I'll be 28 Friday. Happy um, birthday, by the way. Appreciate you respectfully. <laughs> um, like, I don't, I don't go and party probably like your average. It's nothing out there you know in your 20s or yeah i just know i know i know if i keep writing i'm gonna have everything i want yeah if i just keep writing if i just keep working if i just keep pushing i know i'm gonna have everything i want you know and uh you know we trying to we we, we trying to 
we're trying to create generational wealth so it's not it's not just like a for me kind of thing it's not like i said it's, it's you know this is bigger than me do you have it's kids than, nah i ain't got no kids okay nope one day yeah <laughs> but yeah like you know like i said this is bigger than me this for mama love this for this for my pops this for all the people that uh people before me that took care of me that got their chance and didn't get the you know bust and pop like they wanted to yeah you know what i'm saying um and I I really just I come from a long line of just hustlers. Yeah. You know. Um you ever seen Paid in Full? Yes. So in Paid in Full Ace was in front of the store and they said, If you was here, you was somebody. Yeah. This is the stage. This is it, yeah. Uh you remember the name of that store? I don't. It's called Willie's Burgers. My mother, that's her father. <laughs> Really? Yeah. So that's my that's my blood grandfather. Wow. I would love I would love to work with Damon Dash on doing that story. Man. I, Damon Dash, I would love to work with you on doing the story on my grandfather. Willie's Burgers was his store, respectfully. But um, I just feel like you know I came I, I came from a long line of those, of that of that, of that, of that you know bloodline. So. Yeah. Just, you know, knowing his story, him, he dropped out when he was in second grade. <laughs> right, right, right. Built a story, <laughs> you know. Got a whole story to tell. Yeah, got a story to tell. I think he was supposed to be on American Gangsta. I think he turned it down or something. Like, I don't know. I love don't that you're me. bringing these stories to life, though. Like, they're real stories, but you're bringing them to life for people who may not have experienced it. Nah, yeah, Let sure. me ask you this. Are you going to continue acting, or do you want to focus more on the directing and, and write, script writing right now? Oh, I'm going to continue doing both. I'm going to be honest. I love being on camera. Yeah. I love it. I love being on camera. The same way I love creating a story, I love being on camera. I, uh, I love directing as well, just, as, just, just the same. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. With the films that you write, you cast people to be in the film. Obviously, you have a script written. Do you allow them to still somewhat improv if it fits that particular scene? Yeah, me personally. Excuse me. I love for people to improv, especially if I could see that that's, that's actually, you know, kind of your character. Yeah. But um, if it's not your character and you can still improv and it makes sense in the scene, I would love that as well because I feel like improv is the best acting comes out more natural yeah it's because i, I meant to say it <laughs> you know you know, you know <laughs> damn well that denzel's doing him in these films yes, he's I, not following it verbatim i want to meet denzel so bad <laughs> so i could just 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 denzel, grab some knowledge and, come sit down with us what's good respectfully man <laughs> <laughs> now nah, that would be like a dream come true denzel's yeah. just one of the best to ever do it but i yeah, i love that sure. too because i've done voiceover for a couple you know small films that oh, are like on dope. amazon and stuff so yeah yeah, keep that in mind too. I love that's using dope. my voice. I even got a whole setup at the house yeah, where I got can, a radio voice. Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just I wondered if a lot of these filmmakers allow people to improv. You know, not completely switch the script or flip the script, but allow them to kind of be themselves per se because it comes out more natural. Yeah, it really depends on who you are, how big the set is. Right. That's really, it really depends on that. Yeah. If you got a, a set that's like multi million dollar budget, then they might be like, you got to stick to the script. But if you are, if you are Will Smith, you still might be able to pull that off. <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> Let me ask you this. Speaking of Will Smith, have you watched the series um, Bel Air? I have not watched Bel Air. It's so but great. I've seen a few episodes, and I'm going to tell you. I, I'm not sure who the writer is, but man, Will, I love what you did with Bel Air. I man. love it. You made it. You made it modern. Modern. You made you made it to where as though young people like me, I can feel that. I can feel that when I watched the few episodes that I did watch, I felt that Will. I felt that when he went through his look, I felt those. Yes. Those are real situations that really happened in my life. Yes. And I'm sure a lot of you know other people's lives in the urban community yeah so i feel like i feel like you you did your you did your big one with uh with belly i love it sure. man i can't wait for the next season to start i wish i could get a role in that you <laughs> nah facts and <laughs> shout out to coco jones man she's so beautiful she plays hillary on there ah 
I love her because she's a singer. She's an R and B singer, like a famous R and B singer. Yeah, it's crazy because most most uh, entertainers or rap. If you, I feel like, I feel like if you can rap or sing. You can act. Will, Will, who plays Will on Bel Air, sings yeah. as well. Oh, he do? Yeah, and I'm oh, just like, dope. yeah, super dope. So you're right. I, I agree with you. That is dope, man. Yeah. Well, listen, it was such a pleasure to have you here. For sure, for sure. We definitely got to stay connected. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to stay connected with you. And that way, you know, maybe we can work on some stuff together. That yeah, would be super like dope. We like that. Big facts, man. Tell everybody where they can follow you on your social media. So y'all can follow me at Million Dollar Key, at Million Dollar Key, Million. D O L L A K E I I million D O L L A K E I I million dollar key go check that no honor loyalty or love out on boosymovie.com yeah do you have a website yet uh a personal website yeah no put one together that way you can put all your work on there no that would be fire that would be million dollar key.com or if you have a business name boom that way you can put all your work on there and direct everybody to one spot to go check out your films and all that stuff. So I never thought about that. Yeah. Coming soon. <laughs> Respectfully. Coming soon. I know throughout this conversation, you mentioned a lot of great people that you've worked with, you know, yeah. from family to friends, the people you met along the way. Is there anybody that you want to give thanks to for just showing you love and supporting your journey? Um, I feel like. I feel like my family and friends kind of had it the hardest. Yeah. Uh, more than anybody, Mama Love, Ma, I appreciate you. There's a lot of investing you did in me. It's a lot of um, time you took out of your life and gave to me that you didn't have to. I know a lot of people who are not close to their mother. I got the best mother in the world. Nobody can tell me different. Mm -hmm. um, my pops talking to me. My pops talked to me. Regardless of how I'm feeling, regardless of how he feeling, he got an open ear for me. Uh, they both my best friends. I love it. I Sometimes I feel like my mom's realer than a lot of the niggas I know. Man. Nah, that's facts. Real talk. Um, they just stand up people. And I feel like that's where I get a lot of my, you know, my one-two from. And I definitely appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. Because without y'all, I feel like uh, I'd probably be in a bad place. Probably be somewhere I don't want to be. Uh, y'all keep me level-headed. Y'all keep me. Uh, y'all keep me focused. Even when y'all not telling me to focus, y'all keep me focused because I'm thinking about y'all. Mm. Respectfully. I love that. I love that, and I can tell that. Shout out to your mom and your pops. They instilled a lot of good in you. I can tell your energy is beautiful. <laughs> I'm big on people's energy. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Likewise. Because I talk about it sometimes. I have to sit down with people and they drain me because their energy is just off. Yeah. After this conversation, I feel refreshed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I definitely shout out to you and shout out to your whole family and everybody that's instilled the good in that. you. Definitely. One last question I got for you. Let's get it. We're live. Where are we at? Industries. Big industry is most wanted, not the little one. Not the little one. Not the little one. What makes Million Dollar Key the industry's most wanted? Oh, man. <laughs> what make Million Dollar Key the industry most one is he's the best director around, man. He's the best up and coming, respectfully. And, you know, like, you know, again, back to the energy thing. It's like that energy is a motherfucker. That perseverance is a motherfucker. So it's like, you know, when people see you just showing up no matter what, like I, I could do a movie with Boosie and whoever, but you'll still see me on a set. That's small, but I'm still getting them roles, and I'm still, you know, I'm still pushing. Um, so I feel like what make me the most wanted is, is I'm the best to ever do it, man, respectfully. This is going to take y'all a minute to catch up. That's get, it. Get on board or get left behind. Yeah, respectfully. Period. Roll with me or get rolled over, nigga. <laughs> I love this guy, man. <laughs> we up out of here, y'all. Respectfully.